Today, we'll be ranking the top 20 strongest characters in Jujutsu Kaisen. We'll start with one of the strongest Culling game players, Hiromi, and in later parts of the video, we'll be covering some of the legendary characters that are in a completely different league compared to everyone else. Hiromi was originally an ordinary non-sorcerer and a defense attorney. However, when the Culling game started, he became an impressively strong sorcerer in only 12 days. Not only did he become this powerful in less than two weeks, but he also learned how to use his domain expansion, Deadly Sentencing. During the Culling games, he was the first one to reach 100 points among all the players, which means he killed at least 20 other people. This is even more impressive considering he wasn't actively searching for people to kill. He only killed those who came after him. Since Hiromi is considered a genius, his fighting style also reflects that, with his domain expansion revolving around debating and tricking the opponent instead of violent all-out attacks. After each character, we'll also speculate how strong they'll be at the end of the series, and you'll definitely be surprised by some of the results. Since Hiromi isn't expected to get any new power-ups, his place will most likely stay the same. Number 19. Aoi Toto. Toto has a high degree of cursed energy and a really good understanding of how to utilize it, making him arguably the strongest grade one sorcerer in the series. We first saw his powers during the Kyoto Goodwill event where he and Yuji fought against Hanami. Although Hanami was a special grade cursed spirit, Toto held his ground pretty well and even found the time to tutor Yuji during the fight, showing just how much confidence Toto has in his abilities. Even though he never awakened domain expansion like Higurama, I'd argue that his boogie woogie more than makes up for it. Using this ability, Toto can switch the position of any anything with cursed energy within his range simply by clapping his hands. This pretty much means he can just teleport himself and others however he pleases. When he and Yuji fought against Awakened Mahito during Shibuya, Toto was forced to avoid all of Mahito's attacks as well as a bunch of transfigured humans at the same time, all while helping Yuji land attacks on the curse. Even when he lost his hand, he was still able to outsmart Mahito and help Yuji land a finishing blow on him. However, this injury means that Toto can't perform his signature technique anymore, and that's why his place at the end of the series will stay the same. Number 18, Megumi Fujigoro. Megumi is a first year at Tokyo Jujutsu High and one of the characters with the highest potential in the entire series. At one point, even Gojo stated that Megumi could become as strong as him one day. Megumi inherited the 10 Shadows technique, a prize technique passed down in the Zenin family which allows him to summon up to 10 Shikigami to aid him in battle. During the death painting arc, Megumi decided to go all out and let his imagination flow freely, opening his domain for the first time. Chimera Shadow Garden. This domain floods the area with fluid shadows that can rapidly produce any Shikigami Megumi desires. In addition to Shikigamis, Megumi can now also produce clones of himself from the shadows, and if he focuses hard enough, he can even produce a subscribe button out of the shadows. Okay, that last one's maybe not true, but you should definitely click it. Thank you. Anyway, later throughout the story, Megumi took on many strong opponents like Reggie Star and was even able to save his fellow sorcerers from Dagon's domain expansion. It's evident that Megumi has a lot of potential, which Sukuna displayed well by using his techniques. If Megumi survives the current events in the story, he'll definitely emerge much stronger. Number 17, Yuji Itadori. Yuji is one of the Jujutsu High's most valuable assets and the first human who could control Sukuna within him. Despite having no connections to the Jujutsu world, Yuji was able to become an incredibly strong sorcerer with only two months of training, to the point that he can now contend with and defeat grade one and even special grade curses. Even without the usage of cursed energy, Yuji has inhuman strength as he can destroy walls with ease and also throw cars. Once he learned to control cursed energy, his most powerful attack became a technique called Black Flash. In order to use it, Yuji has to connect an impact of cursed energy immediately after landing a physical hit. This will create a spatial distortion and make his attack around two and a half times more powerful. Some of Yuji's biggest achievements as a sorcerer are battling against Choso and Mahito, and although Sukuna played a part in each of these battles, Yuji still managed to hold his own against these insanely powerful curses. As the show's main character, Yuji will definitely get a huge power up at some point and possibly surpass some of the strongest sorcerers in the series, putting him at around 8th place. Number 16, Choso. Choso is one of the incarnated curse womb, Death Paintings, which pretty much makes him half human, half curse. While still existing as a cursed object, Choso was self-aware, allowing him to hone his curse techniques for 150 years. Choso mostly uses blood manipulation to fight, and other than Kenjaku, he's probably the strongest user of this ability in the series. His feats speak for themselves, as he would surely win against Yuji if Mechimaru didn't interfere, he defeated Naoya, and even Tenken chose him as a bodyguard over Yuji and Megumi. And don't even get me started on how impressive he was in his fight against Kenjaku.
All in all, Choso surely deserves his place on this list. Number 15, Dagon and Hanami. The four unregistered special grade cursed spirits are all unreasonably powerful, which is to be expected considering the fact that they're created from humanity's collective fear of natural disasters. However, the four of them are not equal, and that's why the 15th spot on this list goes to Dagon and Hanami. Hanami is a cursed spirit with a powerful technique that allows him to control plants and an uncanny ability to hide his presence. He's so good at this that he even managed to catch Gojo by surprise. On the other hand, Dagon's ability allows him to generate and control water. Even two grade one sorcerers working together, Nanami and Nabito, weren't able to successfully exercise Dagon and instead almost got killed by him. However, in the end, despite their strength, both Hanami and Dagon were the first special grade curses to die. Hanami was ruthlessly overpowered by Gojo while Dagon was quickly killed by Toji. Also, their domain expansions, Ceremonial Sea of Light and Horizon of the Captivating Skanda, didn't really get much screen time. So in order to keep it simple, I'll put them both at the 15th spot on the list. Since both of these characters are already dead, their place at the end of the series will obviously stay the same. Number 14, Ryu and Udo. These two are very close to being special grade sorcerers, meaning that the curses mentioned so far should pose no problem for them. Both Ryu and Udo are sorcerers from long ago, reincarnated by Kenjaku to participate in the Culling game. The striking thing about Ryu is that he had the highest cursed energy output out of any other player in the Culling game. As for Udo, she was the leader of a group of elite assassins during the golden age of Jujutsu. Both of them have really impressive cursed techniques. Ryu can shoot directed blasts of cursed energy, while Udo can turn the sky into a tangible surface and manipulate space. This definitely wasn't an easy fight for Yuta, and considering how strong he is, that's saying a lot about Udo's and Ryu's strength. It's also important to mention that both of them have domain expansions, but because they used it at the same time as Yuta, the barrier came apart before any of the three domains could be fully realized. Number 13, Mejito. The scary thing about Mejito is that he can easily take out most of the characters in the story because of his idol transfiguration. It's a cursed technique that grants him the ability to reshape souls. Doing so allows him to disfigure the body of his victims or heal his own wounds. Basically, one touch from him and it's over for your everyday sorcerer. Mejito is also the only special grade curse whose growth we actually get to see. He learned his domain expansion, Self Embodiment of Perfection, in a matter of days, and when he saw Gojo use Unlimited Void for only 0.2 seconds, he was immediately able to replicate it. When he finally realized the true essence of his soul during the Shibuya arc, he instantly got much stronger, and it took the combined efforts of Yuji and Toto to finally bring him down. Mahito had the greatest potential out of all special grade curses, probably because he was spawned out of people's fear and hatred towards each other, which is far stronger than any of the fears of natural disasters. Number 12, Jogo. Sometimes I feel bad about Jogo. He's obviously incredibly strong, but his opponents were Gojo and Sukuna, which is just cruel. However, there's a reason Jogo only fought these two monsters. It's because he far outclasses most other sorcerers in the story. Since Jogo was spawned out of people's hatreds towards volcanic natural disasters, his powers also reflect that, with him being able to produce highly concentrated cursed flames. He also has a domain expansion, Coffin of the Iron Mountain, which is pretty broken as well. But what truly separates him from the other three special grade curses is the fact that even Sukuna, the king of curses himself, told him that he was strong. And this is a compliment Sukuna doesn't hand out lightly. Just remember how he treated Mahito during their encounter. Number 11, Maki Zenin. Although Maki started off as an average strength sorcery, that quickly changed during perfection preparation arc when Mai sacrificed herself in order to help her get stronger. After Mai's death, Maki obtained the body of steel and all her senses were amplified to the point that she could sense changes in air density and temperature. While she was rampaging through the Zenin clan, she was able to pretty much one-shot both Ogi and Junichi, two special grade first class sorcerers, and none of the clan's strongest fighters had any chance against her. What happened to the Zenin clan that day wasn't a fight. It was a complete slaughter. Since Maki already had a major power up recently, I doubt she'll get much stronger than she currently is, so her place at the end of the series will most likely stay the same. Number 10, Toji Fujigoro, the Sorcerer Killer. Even though Toji's and Maki's strength are on a similar level now, Toji has a way better understanding of curse tools and has more combat experience due to him hunting sorcerers his entire life. He was the only character in the whole series able to win against Gojo. Not only that, but he was also able to effortlessly defeat Geto, who was considered Gojo's equal at the time. Toji's strength lies in him possessing no cursed energy. This makes him undetectable by other Jujutsu sorcerers, which allows him to move through barriers unnoticed and even sneak past Gojo's six eyes technique. This also helps his unpredictability in battle and causes others to underestimate him based purely on cursed energy. However, with that said, Toji isn't invincible and can easily lose to the top tier sorcerers, like the one we're gonna talk about next, Hajime Kashimo. Just like Ryo we covered earlier, Kashimo was a sorcerer from over 400 years ago. However, the main difference between him and Ryo is that Kashimo was actually the strongest sorcerer of that era. 
This is already enough to earn him the spot on this list, as it pretty much puts him in the same league as Gojo and Sukuna, who are both the strongest sorcerers in their eras. Kashimil's cursed energy has the properties of an electric current, putting his body in a constant state of electrification. This makes his reinforced physical attacks impossible to defend against, as his hits shock the opponent upon impact. Although we haven't yet seen Kashimil's innate curse technique since he's saving it for Sukuna, it's surely incredibly powerful. Another interesting thing is that we didn't see Kashimil's domain expansion. I mean, shouldn't the strongest sorcerer of an era be able to cast the domain? It seems there's still much about Kashimo's powers we don't know about. However, one thing is clear, his electrified curse energy and lightning charge won't be nearly enough to go against Sukuna, so we'll have to wait and see what he does next. Number 8. Kinji Hakari the thing about Hikari is that he's not graded, but considering how highly Gojo thinks of him, it seems that Hikari has the potential to rival Gojo one day. I think it's safe to say that his strength is comparable to special grade sorcerers. After all, he did defeat Kashimo, which says a lot. But what exactly is it that makes Hikari such a tough opponent to deal with? His domain expansion, Idle Death Gamble. This domain allows him to create an environment resembling a train station that hosts a game of chance. Hikari's primary goal is to line up three of the same numbers to hit the jackpot, with only a 1 in 239 chance of doing Doing so. However, hitting the jackpot puts Hakari into the unkillable mode. This gives him unlimited curse energy for 4 minutes and 11 seconds, the exact duration of Private Pure Love Train theme song, which plays throughout the round. During this time period, any injuries he experiences are immediately healed, making him quite literally unkillable. I'm sure Hikari will eventually be classified as a special grade, but until then, I can't put him above any of the real special grade sorcerers. Number 7. Yuki Tsukumo Yuki is an extremely powerful fighter, as well as Toto's mentor and the first special grade sorcerer on the list. Her innate technique is called Star Rage, and it allows her to grant virtual mass to herself and her shikigami, Garuda. This mass can enhance her attacks and give them devastating destructive force, capable of effortlessly defeating even the special grade curses. I'd consider Yuki the weakest out of the four special grade sorcerers simply because the story didn't focus on her as much as it did on the others. Her only real battle was against Kenjaku, and even though she put up a good fight, she ultimately wasn't able to defeat him. If she is dead, which seems to be the case, it'd be really unfortunate as we didn't even get to see her domain expansion. However, if by some miracle she turns out to be alive and shows us more of her powers, she can definitely move up a few spots on the list, probably to fifth place. Number 6. Suguru Geto Geto was initially a classmate of Gojo and Shoko at Tokyo Jujutsu High. While there, he was known as one of the strongest sorcerers of his generation and the only one who could rival Gojo. However, over time, his experiences as a sorcerer bred a deep hatred for non-sorcerers, leading to an incident where Geto massacred over a hundred civilians in a single night. He was expelled from Jujutsu High and came to be known as the worst of all curse users and one of the biggest threats to modern society. As for what makes him so strong, it's his cursed spirit manipulation technique that allows him to consume and manipulate cursed spirits. The maximum output of this technique is called Uzumaki, and it combines a massive number of collected curses into one powerful attack. We've seen this attack in Geto's battle against Yuta and Rika, where he used thousands of curses at the same time. Although Geto eventually lost that fight, he'll undoubtedly be remembered as one of the strongest curse users in history. Number 5. Yorozu Yorozu is one of the strongest sorcerers from the Heian era, which is considered to be the golden age of Jujutsu. Her entry in the story was rather abrupt, but I think it's safe to say that she outclasses both Yuki and Geto. Yoru's innate curse technique allows her to recreate any substance she recognizes. Creating something from nothing uses a lot of cursed energy, which makes this technique way more draining compared to other cursed techniques. She also has a domain expansion, and it's called Threefold Affliction. In this domain, Yorozu can use the sure hit effect of the domain and hit the target with any item she's constructed. It may not look that impressive, and is probably not among the coolest domains, but it's pretty effective. Even though Sukuna wasn't taking her too seriously and eventually won the fight using only 10 shadows technique, she did pretty well against him considering Sukuna had the power of 15 fingers at that point. Although we don't know how some of the other characters, like Kashimo, would fare against Sukuna, for now, I think Yorozu deserves 5th place on this list. Number 4. Yuta Okotsu Yuta is currently a second year student at Jujutsu High, and like Geto and Yuki, he is one of only 4 special grade sorcerers. Yuta's immense cursed energy comes from his genetic relation to Michizane Sugawara, one of the big three vengeful spirits and an ancestor to both him and Gojo. Yoto is also able to manifest Rika, a special grade vengeful spirit known as the Queen of Curses. Although this is already pretty impressive, he also has an insanely powerful innate technique called Copy. This allows him to copy other sorcerers' innate techniques and use them himself. He can even use multiple different techniques that he's copied in quick succession. With his immense cursed energy and Rika's help, Yuta has defeated some of the strongest characters in the series, like Geto, Udo, and Ryu. Another thing that separates him from the rest is his excellent understanding of the reverse curse technique, which allowed him to pretty much bring Yuji back to life after killing him. 
Currently, Yuta can only utilize Rika for 5 minutes, but with time, he'll probably be able to do it for much longer. Considering this, and the fact that he has the most potential out of any sorcerer, his rank at the end of the series will probably be a bit higher at 3rd place. Number 3. Kenjaku Kenjaku is an ancient curse user who's lived for over a thousand years using his innate technique, which allows him to transplant his brain into other people and control them. He's inhabited different individuals throughout the centuries and assumed their identities. Some of the bodies he inhabited are Noritoshi Kamo, Kaori Itadori, and most recently, Suguru Geto. Since he's inhabiting Geto's body, Kenjaku can also use Geto's innate abilities like spirit manipulation and Uzumaki. What's even more interesting is that he can extract innate curse techniques of spirits he consumes and store them for one-time use. Uses. This is how he was able to use Idle Transfiguration after consuming Mahito. Although not confirmed, Kenjaku's reverse curse technique is probably among the strongest in the series, as he's had to heal his target's bodies after transplantation. On top of all this, Kenjaku also has a domain expansion called Womb Profusion, which looks like a giant pillar made up of curse spirits. The effects of this domain are still unknown. Now although Kenjaku is the third strongest character in this series, the last two characters are in a completely different league compared to him, and one of them is the strongest sorcerer of the current era. Go Gojo Satoru as soon as Gojo was born, it was said that the balance of power in the Jujutsu world had shifted. He was the only sorcerer in a very long time to be born with both Limitless and Six Eyes techniques, the strongest combination of abilities in the entire story. While he was still a student, he suffered his only loss against Toji Fushiguro, but since then, Gojo has kept getting more and more powerful and now stands at the very pinnacle of Jujutsu, leagues above everyone else. Although Gojo has many cool abilities, the most impressive one is his Infinity. This technique is constantly active, and it makes all incoming attacks infinitely slow down when approaching Gojo, making him pretty much untouchable. Like other top tier sorcerers, Gojo has a domain expansion called Infinite Void, which when activated, traps the opponents in an infinite flow of information, making them unable to think or move. Gojo has proved time and time again why he's the strongest by effortlessly defeating Jogo, battling multiple special grade curses at the same time in Shibuya, and most recently, holding his own against the king of curses himself, Sukuna. Before we cover the strongest character in the entire Jujutsu Kaisen, there are two characters I want to briefly mention, Angel and Tengen. Both of these are undoubtedly among the strongest ones in the series and definitely deserve a spot on the list. However, due to very limited information about them, I'll leave them as honorable mentions for now, which may change as the story progresses. Number 1. Ryomen Sukuna, the King of Curses According to the legend, Sukuna was an imaginary demon, but in truth, he was the strongest Jujutsu sorcerer of all time, also known as the Disgraced One. During the Golden Age of Jujutsu, many sorcerers gave their all against him, but ultimately fell one after another. Sukuna existed throughout the ages by transforming into a cursed object after death, a state where he split his power into 20 indestructible fingers. There is so much about Sukuna we don't know. Heck, we don't even know what his innate technique is. However, we did get to see his domain expansion, Malevolent Shrine, which is portrayed as a Buddhist shrine decorated with skulls. Inside it, Sukuna's opponents will get relentlessly slashed over and over again until nothing is left of them. Sukuna had a few really cool battles throughout the series, but the most impressive one is, by far, his current battle against Gojo. Although the battle seems balanced for now, with both characters holding their own, it seems like Sukuna is plotting something and not using his full strength yet. Anyway, we'll have to wait and see how this plays out. But for now, Sukuna takes the top spot on the list. Click on this video where we explained all of Gojo's forms in Jujutsu Kaisen.